Well, obviously, since we last spoke, two more new faces through the door, and more than 50 appearances between them this season in the level above. Lots of starts in there as well. I mean, your recruitment team are working overtime yourself in your recruitment team, aren't you? Yeah, we've been uh, we've been working really, really hard over a number of weeks now um, to make sure we had um, uh, players in place, um, and I think. The guys have done a fantastic job. Um, Ross has obviously had a recruitment. Demetrius, sporting director, have been working um, several hours um, alongside um, and the guys. So I think they've done an incredible job, and I'm, I'm really thankful for for them for for the work that they've done alongside me and my coaching team. The latest two, Connor Hall and Matt Jay, sort of weren't rumoured, weren't mentioned anywhere. Do you think maybe you caught people a little bit off balance with those two? Um, quite possibly, I guess from our, our side we were just been trying to work as diligently and as hard as we possibly can over a number of weeks now like I say and um, usually these things kind of find a way of getting out but those two, those two didn't which was, which was nice I guess, we don't really want to do our, our work publicly, we like to do it as privately as we possibly can. Um, I met both, my, both of those guys and they're just um, real, good, real good guys who have played to a good level for for a number of years now. Obviously, both got promoted out of the division in the recent in recent history. So um, we know the qualities that they're going to bring, both on and off the pitch. Like I say, they're both real good people um, who want to do well, want to keep progressing, want to keep them, their careers moving forwards. Obviously, different circumstances with um, with Connor being in in Cambridge and, and Matt having to move, you know, a couple hundred miles from home. So. Both big moves for those guys, but we're really um, thankful for the trust that they've placed in, in me and, and us as a football club to make the next you know step in their career here with us at, at Colchester. Yeah, those two in particular, the last two, as we spoke about in the previous three and four, but the, yeah. the last two, experience of promotion and experience, good experience this year, playing at, playing at the higher level. I mean, these are guys who, if you want to throw them in, you can throw them straight in. Yeah, exactly, of course, and they've been playing games regularly this season. They're, like you say, they've, they've been successful over the last few years. Um, they've joined a group that, again, I've spoken about. I've been really pleased with the work that they've done. But um, as we're speaking about those two, we spoke about the other three sort of last week. Those two particularly are, um, like you say, been playing in League One this year, and, and, and two players I really respect, really rate, and, and looking forward to getting involved as, as you know sooner rather than later. You have now, if you if you look through in terms of players that have played regularly this season, including the guys you've signed, you have now a 26 man mm. squad. How difficult is that? to manage in, in terms of keeping people motivated and telling people that look, you might not, not be in the match day AT, you, you might be sat in the stands. Yeah, it's, it's really tough Glenn. Um, I think it's been a situation that I've encountered since I've, since I've been here. You know, we've had a big squad, I know we've um, let a few loan, loanees go back and obviously unfortunately we've lost Judgey and Matty Longstaff to knee injuries which, which was um, really sad for those guys and, and for us as well because I, I like both real good players. So um, yeah, we've had a big squad since I've been here, and it's and it's not an easy situation to to navigate. Um, of course, you want to be the bearer of good news every day and tell everyone they're playing, but we can only pick eleven, and you're always going to have players that are either on the bench or, like you say, maybe not even on the bench. So I, I guess the only way I can deal with that, and the way I try and deal with it, is as honestly and as and as empathetically as I possibly can. I, I respect all the players that are here. Anyone who has a professional football career, I think, um, deserves huge praise in terms of the way they must go about their work. So I respect all of the boys, um, but at the end of the day, I'm here to, to pick a team. I'm here to try and win as many football matches as we possibly can, and it's my job to, to do that. And I have to deliver information, good, good, bad or indifferent, in, in the best way I possibly can. You, you have spoken as well about, you know, you want to be fair to the group that are already here. And you have won three of your last four, you haven't won your last two away. So those five who have come in probably got to be realistic, haven't they? Of course, and I think we've spoken about that. We've spoken to them about... Um, the group that are already here, I've, I've explained to them the respect I have for the group, I've explained to them how I feel they've been playing over a number of weeks now and how the results have kind of turned in our favour slightly over the last couple of weeks but equally you know we're here to progress and we're here to keep moving forward so um, yeah they're, they're respectful of the situation they've walked into and the, and the lads have welcomed them into the change room and, and we have to um, you know my job and our job as employees of this football club is to keep moving forward in the best way we possibly can. Do you feel in that case that without looking at individuals that, that for the good of certain people here, you know, they will have to move on sooner rather than later to get out and play. Yeah, I think um, as a footballer, all you want to do is, is play on a Saturday afternoon. That's how I always felt. And I know the majority of people are like that. You get, you get some people who are more motivated than others in any kind of walk of life in any industry. But, you know, footballers want to play and they're paid to play football. So if it's not going to happen at a certain club, then you try and find a resolution to that. And, 
Um, I'm sure over the next little while, if there's people that aren't playing here, we, we may look to a solution of, that they can play elsewhere. Rochdale got a good win at, at Bradford on, on Tuesday night. Gillingham got new owners, made a couple of good signings. One from Matt Jays at the seat, previous club as well. Um, Hartlepool have, have made a move as well. Everyone's making their move. Crawley are looking for a new manager. This seems to be sort of a moving time in January now, doesn't it? And everyone's sort of eyeing everybody else up. Yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, I sat and watched the game last night. Um, Bradford against uh, uh, Rochdale. I thought Rochdale were very good, I must admit. I thought they were full of energy. I thought they had an attacking threat. They were solid, they've changed shape. Um, so we've looked at that as well. We've prepared for both shapes. They've been four at the back all season until last night. So we've prepared for both, we sat and watched it. Um, so we're ready for what they may bring in either formation. We've, we've done our research. Um, and like you say, everyone, everyone's um, strengthening. I think the competition down the bottom will, will get intensified over the, the second half of the season. Um, so we're certainly not um, getting carried away with, with a couple of wins, certainly not. Our feet are firmly on the floor, Glenn. Um, you know, my boring mantra that I, I say to you guys every week, it's, it's not even about Saturday, it's about today, getting the work done right today and tomorrow and we move forward day by day. That's the only way I possibly know how to work. I can't look too far in the future because you forget about what's right in front of you. So, yeah, we, we, we know that everyone's strengthening, we know that um, it's going to be a, a tough second half of the season, but we're also confident in the signings we've made. We're confident in the boys that are in the building, and, and we know what we, the strengths that we're bringing at the moment. And we we working as hard as we possibly can to keep keep moving forward and keep improving as much as we possibly can. And it, it might not just be about you, yourselves, Rochdale, Gillingham, Hartlepool, because you're starting to really know the sides now, aren't you? Of course, yeah. I think. We have to get the balance right between knowing what's at stake at the bottom of the league but also looking upwards. We don't want to keep looking over our shoulder all the time. We want to keep um, being optimistic and looking forward. Um, as long as we're realistic in that approach, I'm, I'm happy to do so. I think we need to... I'm not one for looking at the league table. I, I, honestly, I don't, I don't study it. Um, for me, um, that's just an outcome of what you do during the week. So I, I know certain people like to look at it and study it and know if, where everyone is. I don't, I don't really do that as much as what other people do. I'm, I'm more... Um, focused on and more obsessed about what we're doing in our everyday lives and how we're going to keep moving forward and each match is worth three points to us and we want to keep accumulating the points that's the only way we can be you know obviously as you get towards the end of the season the, the table makes more of a an impact on you but for me uh, Glenn it's more about focusing on ourselves and making sure that we're trying to look upwards and just just finally just going back to sort of January transfer window yeah. have you had any offers for your players or not because there's obviously two or three who might be attracting attention yeah I think there's there's interest in, in some of our players. I think people have been to watch all season, um, but as far as I know, it's not. As far as I know, there's there's been no bids for anybody. Um, I know I know the chairman is is backing us to, to help move us forward, which is incredible of him to, to be doing so. Um, and I know that some of our boys are getting watched, which they deserve to be because they're performing well. They're of a young age. Um, and they're performing well in, in the football league, so they're going to attract people watching. But for those boys, my message to them is, is clear and strong. Um, the move will come at the right time, if and when they're performing for Colchester United in the way that they are. So all they can do is focus on their performances here, um, and what will be will be in the future. But we don't want anyone in this building who's, who's looking outside of it. It has to be focused on, on us and, and what we're doing. And we've got some, a, a real good group of lads, you know, and, and some of the young boys coming through, I'm really proud of the way they conduct themselves. Um, they're in my office, we look through clips, we try to improve them all the time. They work diligently on the training ground. Um, so, you know, we want to make sure that they keep their feet firmly on the ground and that they're, they're trying to improve every game.